Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to be installing and giving a first impressions type of review on the DTK3 from Zenico. This is a muzzle brake that's actually available for both the 545 and the 762. It'll work for both of them. Uh, if you have a 24, it'll work for both of them, assuming you have the right uh, newer type of threading and not the old type. So, uh, I'm going to switch views here and let's get this on the gun. Here we are, so let's get this out. So as usual, we got the good Zenico documentation here along with the item itself. And this should weigh 193 plus or minus 3 grams. And it also gives the dimensions here, but uh, I'll take those myself and show those later. Um, and by later, I actually mean right now. And one more thing, this gun is clear. I always check them before the video, but just for proof. There we go. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is I will not be taking the measurements or anything of this Bulgarian muzzle brake that I have on here because I already did a video where I did that and that was the uh, well, when I created the video, the previous muzzle brakes video I did on the Sturm, I measured this. So I'll put those uh, up somewhere on the screen here, um, but I'm not actually going to measure it again because it, it's not going to change. Uh, I'll just have it up on the screen. Getting back to this for the length, so according to this Zenico page, this document here, it should be 30 by 106 plus or minus 3 millimeters. So as usual, let's see if that is correct. I always like to verify these things myself. Yep. And uh, I will, as usual, put the conversions onto the screen. Yeah, that is exact, unsurprisingly. And next, I just want to check the weight. And same with the weight, this is something I already checked in the last video, so I'll just put it up on the screen, won't actually take the weight of the Bulgarian one again. Okay, so for a weight, we've got 6.3 ounces, again I'll just check from a different angle just to make sure it's not imbalanced, so 6.3, or 178 grams, which makes me think my scale's a little bit off because it's supposed to be 196 plus or minus 3 grams, but uh, I mentioned this also in the last video on muzzle brakes, but my scale m probably is just ever so slightly off, so just take that into consideration. And what I like, what I mentioned in, in the last one again, but both the muzzle brakes that I measured, the Bulgarian and this one, will be both equally wrong, if that makes sense, but then it's just a way to get a comparison of the weights to see if how much more this weighs, if that makes sense. Now to actually put this on, so pretty straightforward procedure. If you've watched the other muzzle brake video I did, you already know what I'm going to do, so you could just skip this, but just got to push the pin down here at the front, and then I'll just unscrew this, and I'll just put this other one on. Now that these are both off, one thing I did notice is the DTK3 is quite a bit thicker. Which I suspect is going to make it a little bit harder to push the pin down to take it on or off, but we'll find out. So before I actually put this on, it would be easier to show this here before it's on the rifle. Uh, I got a comment in the last video I did on the Sturm. I didn't know what these holes are, were for, uh, because the Sturm had them also, but these offsets are actually for the uh, shorter length sort of carbine length barrels, uh, AKs, because they actually have an offset uh, pin on the front there. So when I take this out to the range to test how well it does, I'm not going to be using these other two notches like I did last time mistakenly. I don't know how well I'll be able to hold this steady because this is kind of an awkward angle for me to put on from, but here it is going into the pins and as I was suspecting it is a little bit hard to push my finger in there to get it um, pushed down to get it installed. I, I don't know how hard it's going to be on installing it, but that's just a little thing to notice. Not too troublesome, at least not yet. Okay, so I did in fact go off camera to uh, screw this down the rest of the way. It did become a little bit troublesome. I was just doing that with my fingernail earlier and I was having trouble uh, getting my fingernail down there to hold it down and I just, I just used a multi-tool and all problems will, were solved then. So next step, I'll take this out to the range and uh, I'll get some statistics on how it performs and hopefully we'll see a difference between this 
and the Bulgarian over there. Getting started with the DTK-3 with the Mantis X firing 10 rounds on the recoil meter. The average results from the DTK-3 were 0.84 seconds recovery time, 1.48 degrees of muzzle rise, 0.89 degrees recoil width, and 2.57 degrees on the recoil angle. For what that means, the muzzle rise is pretty straightforward, it's just how much the muzzle travels vertically up from recoil. Recovery time is how long it takes for me to get back on target. Recoil width is uh, reading directly from Mantis X's website, the width of the loop formed by the upward and downward movement of the gun, and recoil angle, again reading directly from Mantis X's website, is the angle to the left or right that the gun moved as it recoiled upwards. Next, we're doing the same thing here with the Bulgarian muzzle brake, firing 10 rounds again. The results here were actually 0.31 seconds in recovery time, less than half of that with the DTK-3. However, the muzzle rise was 2.04 degrees, recoil width was 1.15 degrees, and recoil angle was 6.11 degrees. All of those were much higher than the DTK-3, with the exception of the recovery time. Now for a side-by-side -side test of the muzzle flash between the two brakes. As you can see here, they're both pretty similar in how much muzzle flash they produce. Though, in my opinion, I would say the Bulgarian muzzle brake did a little bit worse here, just because where the muzzle flash is, it's kind of jetting the muzzle flash outwards to the sides and in front of it, whereas with the DTK-3, you can see the muzzle flash is much more confined to the inside of the brake itself, so it'd probably be a little bit less noticeable when you're shooting in more darker areas. So even without the Mantis X, I was able to definitely pick up. There is a lot less muzzle rise with this DTK-3 in comparison to the standard muzzle brake. Um, however, one thing that of course cannot be measured by the Mantis X, but I did pick up on quite a bit, was there's a fair bit of blast back to you, the shooter, and also to those around you. Uh, from what other people were saying that were out at the range, with me. There there was a fair bit of blast to other people around me, but um, it was fairly confined. Like, people probably past 7 or 10 feet about would probably not feel any blast at all. Compared to the standard, however, I don't feel any blast to my face, to, face at all when I'm using this one, so it's just something to keep in mind. The blast, as I mentioned, you know, this has a bit, I can feel a bit, but it really doesn't seem that bad at all. It is very, very minor, and when you look at the Mantis X, actually, you can it kind of translates over a little bit because I have a higher recovery time with this DTK. Even though the muzzle rise and all the other recoil statistics are lower, my recovery time is quite a bit higher on this, and that's, I think, because I'm actually kind of blinking a little bit like that every time the blast comes back, and uh, I just don't have that with this standard one. So even though it might be a bit more kind of work to get back on target when I'm using this one, because there is more recoil, or more muzzle rise with the standard one. Um, with this one, I'm just kind of like taking a second to just like blink and uh, get over the blast. So that is something to consider. Um, I've heard a lot of other people say that they don't really have an issue with the blast on this, and I personally I feel like I am probably a little bit on the more sensitive side to blast as the shooter. Uh, so that's something to keep into consideration. It's pretty comparable to a lot of American muzzle brakes I've shot, but you'll definitely want to consider that. And one other thing I noticed is although this DTK-3 is quite a bit, in relative comparison, quite a bit heavier than this standard muzzle brake, neither of which really felt much different in terms of weight up here. I didn't feel any difference at all between the two when I was shooting them based for uh, like barrel being heavier at all. So that was good, even though this one is officially it is heavier, but you can't feel it. So would I recommend this? It's kind of a weird one. Um, I would recommend this for reducing muzzle flat or muzzle rise, 100%. It does a really, really good job at that. You saw the Mantis X. It had a very, very low muzzle rise, and all that stuff was really great. But as I mentioned, the recovery time and you know just the blast I kind of felt, it wasn't that pleasant. Uh, that might be something that I might just kind of get used to. As I said, it's very comparable to a lot of other brakes I've shot with. Um, on other rifles, you know, just American-made brakes, so it might just be me being sensitive to the blast. I think it's something to take into consideration, but also if you shoot in, in an indoor range, you may also want to consider the blast that other people would feel, because in an indoor range, it'd be probably pretty bad. In uh, the outdoor range that I normally shoot at, 
you know, it, it just disperses and it's not really an issue past a pretty short range, the blast, but could definitely become a pretty big issue there. Ultimately, I would just say it depends on your conditions and what you're buying it for, what you want most out of it, but hopefully that gave you a good bit of information. I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.